Now, this channel has never shied away from standing up to the PC mob and their tokenistic displays of so-called activism, which has seen numerous important figures cancelled. But is sanity finally prevailing? Well, friend of the show, the author and podcaster of Trigonometry, Constantine Kissens, attack on Woke at the Oxford Union has gone viral this week with over 50 million views and growing. Watch. Only thing that wokeness has to offer in exchange is to brainwash bright young minds like you to believe that you are victims, to believe that you have no agency, to believe that what you must do to improve the world is to complain, is to protest, is to throw soup on paintings. We sit on this side of the house because we know that the way to improve the world is to work, is to create, it is to build. And the problem with woke culture is that it's trained too many young minds like yours to forget about that. Oh, Constantine, bravo. I can see why 50 million people plus are watching that because I think it gives some of us hope that maybe the tide is starting to turn on this madness. What's your take? Yeah, and I, th I think also the reason people uh, enjoyed it as well is I'm actually challenging these young people to be better. Uh, mm. rather, I think you know and, uh, and I that we've all spoken about the problems with world culture and the many problems. Um, but I think what we have to start to think about is how do we get beyond that? And we're going to need these kids. They're going to be paying our pensions 40 years from now or whenever it is. And we need them to step up. If you know the entire speech I talk about climate change, which is an issue they really care about. If you care about it, that means you have to work. You have to find technical solutions. And, and that's what I think we have to start getting to. Rather than just focusing on what's wrong with wokeness, I think we all know what's wrong with wokeness at this point. We have to start thinking about how do we encourage young people to be better, mm -hmm. to be more resilient mentally and so on. Well, yeah, and it's hard for them, though, isn't it, Constantine? Because as much as I criticise them, they are now growing up in a culture where they are told, right from a very young age, not only is it OK to be a victim, actually, it's sometimes a preferable thing to be, to be a victim, to sort of wallow in victimhood. Exactly. And I think that's where we as adults have to step in and go, actually, you know, if you want to make something of yourself, because look, the reality is young people do want to get on in life mm. and make something of themselves. Victimhood is not going to be the way you achieve that. And make, quite a lot of them have never heard that message before. So one of the interesting things about it was talking to the students afterwards at the Oxford mm. Union. And there were quite a lot of them who were... How did it go down? Did they, did they like what you had to say? I think some of them liked what I had to say. But the interesting thing is there were quite a few people who came up to me and said, you know what, I was very skeptical, but actually it was an interesting speech and it made me think. And I think that's the sort of thing that we have to start thinking about is what is our positive vision for these uh, young people and for our own children? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, our generation, their generation, I think we've been badly let down by actually yes. previous generations who haven't told us what is the way mm -hmm. to actually think about things and what is the way to live life. I agree, but I also think people have to make individual choices, don't, don't they? And I think if you look at uh, my history or your history, for example, uh, neither of us were born with a silver spoon mm. in our mouth. We also were not born in this country. Mm. Uh, the odds were against us, you could say. And there are lots of things that I could talk about where people might think I'm a victim, mm. but I refuse to do so. It's not that I don't want to share myself because I'm actually a very open person, mm. but it's because I refuse to be one of those people who walks around being a victim. I think actually uh, one of the worst things about woke culture is sometimes it's all about focusing on the past and it's not about actually working about, out about how you can use the tough obstacles in life to actually make something of I yourself. couldn't agree with you more, Dan, and that's why I think that is the message that we should be sharing with people is, look, 20 years ago I was sleeping in a park in Edinburgh mm. because I couldn't afford rent, right? And here I am now, I've got a Sunday Times best-selling book, I've got a very successful YouTube show, and that is the beauty of the West, as you know, I talk about it in my book. You have the opportunity to make something of yourself. You've done it, I've done it, and there are plenty of people watching this who are maybe young and maybe haven't had the opportunity to do that. Well, guess what? You live in a country, one of very few countries in the world, where you can come from nothing and make something of yourself, and that is the yeah. beautiful thing about the West. Look, I love your positive message, right? But what about those times when I get very angry, <laughs> when I do see, like I just showed before the break, mm. these absolute idiots, and by the way, they usually are young, middle-class, champagne socialists from universities like Oxford uh, throwing paint 
all over the front of Michael Gove's office today because they think they're making a point, but actually all they're doing is making poor working class people have a really miserable day because they have to clean up after them. You know, I, that actually makes me really angry because I think that level of privilege and stupidity mm -hmm. uh, is infuriating. I agree with you. And by the way, you know, the more we've interviewed people on trigonometry about this issue, the more I've come to realize that wokeness is actually an anti-human ideology. Yes. And that yes. is why I talk so much about climate change. And it's not about whether it's happening or not. It's about how are you going to fix that? And the problem we seem to have is because uh, wokeness, the, you know, the story goes something like this. We are evil people and we must be punished. Mm -hmm. And that's why you get net zero and all this other stuff. And as I make the point in the speech, making poor pensioners die of cold in Britain isn't going to fix the climate, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I agree with you that there's a lot of things to be annoyed about, but I think we have to start talking to young people. And remember, they're young people. They don't know anything. What did you know when you were 20? Mm -hmm. What did I? We have to start engaging with them and challenging them to be the better. The problem is you think you know everything. <laughs> and because of the Greta Thunbergs of this world, mm. because of woke people like Nicola Sturgeon, who I think are actually taking advantage of 16 and 17 year olds uh, for her own political gain mm. and to advance her own very woke political agenda, actually these young people are being empowered in a way that maybe previous generations weren't. I, I agree with you. I think the incentive structures are there for them to be victims. I mean, you were talking about Harry and Meghan earlier. And uh, we, we just had David Starkey on the show. We're going to release the interview on Sunday. And he made the point that uh, Harry has actually done something very, very good in his life by starting the Invictus Games. Do you know what yes. Invictus means in Latin? Yes. Not victim. Yes. Right? And this is the incredible thing. So we do, of course, you're right, we live in he a world... He talks about that in his book, actually, how they came up with the name, and it's so ironic, mm -hmm. given that the rest of the book is all about how he's the biggest victim in the world. Right. And so that is a very good example of how victimhood is incentivized in our society. But I think the truth is, as you know full well, Dan, that sort of approach to life is not going to make you happy. And I think Harry's a very good example of that. Yes. So the message, I think, to young people has got to be, if you want a fulfilled life, if you want to make something of yourself, you have the opportunity mm. to do that, and crying about it isn't going to make things better. No, it was a really brilliant message. I absolutely love the speech. I watched the full thing, and I really recommend that everyone does. But I think you've really hit the nail on the head with Harry, right? Pre-woke, he did something brilliant for the world, the Invictus Games, something that could have been his legacy, and maybe one day it still will be. And he seemed really happy, mm. right? He seemed like a really happy guy. Post-woke, he's done nothing for the post -woke world. Post-woke or post-Megan? Because it's all hard he does, to tell. Well, <laughs> maybe one day post-Megan. A beautiful Megan, woman will do that But too. indeed, for now, uh, you know, post his woke agenda, miserable. Yeah. And all he does is talk about being a victim rather than helping the real victims of the world. And I think actually if young people sort of look at those two Harrys, maybe they'll get an idea of why sometimes you want to reject the woke ideology. But I think you've done a very good job to start that. Thanks happening. for having me back, Dan. Great to see you, Constantine. That's Constantine Kisson, uh, who is, of course, host of the Brilliant Trigonometry podcast.